I know, I know. They're blowing up my beautiful paint. That'd be alright. I wish I had a, a something like a, a fireproof something to put on that. I don't think we do. We have our brand as well as the jacket. We might be able to use that to help protect it a little bit, I guess. Better than nothing. Yeah. Better than nothing. All right, so I've cut that out, and here's where we're headed. What I'd like to do is I want to make this to where I have a receiver tube on either side because I want to create something as an addition to this trailer. And I don't want this trailer to be built specific where it can only do this one thing. I want it to be just a general utility trailer that can do lots of different things. So that's why I've decided to put these two-inch receiver tubes vertical here because I've got something in mind that's going to go up on either side and have a crossbar. And, uh, you know, it's going to it's gonna require some bracing because it's going to have a little bit of a load on it. For right now, all I need to do is just get these, these things in place, built, reinforced, and get my spare tire mount put back in place somewhere. So I've got the spare tire mount moved, and if this looks like it's in a whole nother axle hub, that's because that's what it is. Um, I need to move it forward because we made a change. We're going to be putting that arch over here so we can load two side-by-sides. I could have put it here, but I thought, you know, later if I needed to add another brace back here, I didn't want this to be in the way. The farther I go forward, the more tongue weight I'm adding. I don't think it's a big deal. When we're using this thing singly, I can push my weight back farther to help to offset the weight, uh, whatever the load is. And if we're using it for the two side by sides, I'm going to have enough tongue or tail weight to offset it as well. So what this is, is I cut out the upright that was there. It was a two by three box tubing, just 12 gauge or something similar. And I replaced it with a piece of uh, 3 16 form steel. And then I just drilled a hole and, uh, you know, basically put a whole nother stub end of your axle. This is a spindle that would weld to the axle tube. So you can buy these online. They're not really expensive. So the idea was I had these two extra hubs because this trailer was originally brakes on one axle. We're going to brakes on both axles. So rather than just, dis just discard these, I decided this would be a great spare tire holder because it allows us to have an extra, a complete extra setup, extra castle nut, extra cotter pin, extra dust, dust cap, inner bearing or outer bearing, inner bearing, a seal, and the hub itself, plus the wheel, plus the tire. So this trailer is going to be used to go to our property in Pennsylvania or in West Virginia that is three hours away. And occasionally we'll haul two side-by-sides and we'll be going to over by Gilbert, West Virginia at the Hatfield McCoy's trails so it's important to me to do anything i can to make it to where if we have a problem it's not really an emergency so this way if we lose a bearing we should have if the spindle if we catch it soon enough and the spindle's okay we should be able to put this on and limp home and not be worried about overloading or bending an axle because we're missing a wheel <coughs> now i'm not only going to do one of these i'm going to do two i'm going to take this setup and do the same thing over there so we have two spare tires 
I could, it was back here. I had to move it because we're doing that arch. I could have went to here because I cut, I cut the upright out. I could have went here, but if I need to add something else for the structure of that, I didn't want the tire to be in the way, so I moved it here. And that adds a little bit of tongue weight up here. In my situation, when I'm using this just locally, it's long enough for what I need it for that I can move my load back some and, and compensate for the load of the tires. So I'm not concerned, but we'll have extra five extra lug nuts. We'll have a uh, extra dust cap. We'll put a chrome cover on this. I'll grease all these uh, after we put it on so that the threads don't get all rusty. Um, I have it set here to where it will turn because I don't want the, this rail to crush this. So what I've done is I've spaced that off just with spacers off of what I built and I got it just right. I don't want the sidewall to be crushed because a lot of times if you have a tire that's sitting there a long time and that sidewall is crushed in, the likeness it could be a blowout is just too great. So I made it to where it can still move, it's just barely touching. And then what we'll do is put some grip tape back behind here just to keep it from spinning. Some people might think it'd be good to have it spin all the time, could. Um, I prefer not, I prefer it just sit stationary and it doesn't come below my lower frame it's even so uh if ever if we get low in the front it is loose enough that this would roll and not skid the tire so i think we're covered there next thing i need to do well i have to do the same thing over there but i'm going to finish this side first i'm working on my receiver tube that just came in and it's going to go here and my arch i went over and measured my son side by side and now i've bought mine so i know what we're working with um I don't need this bar to be as tall as I used to think it did, which is really good. But I'm still going to go with the receiver tube and have the bar slide in when we do need it because I don't want that 2x2 two two box out here all the time when we don't need it. And I don't want to have to run a crossbar all the time to hold it. So I need to get this done. I have to replace the 2x3 two box tube that was in here. It was in the wrong location. So I have some bracing to do. I have to be mindful that this is only like 12 gauge stuff. So I'm going to brace underneath here, come in here with a piece of plate that's going to come out and grab this, encapsulate it. Eh, whatever, I'm talking too much. Let me get to work. I'll show you when I'm done. So this is uh, one of the brackets I'm cutting out. I'm using a plasma cutter. I just changed out my tips. I was having a little trouble. Now it's cutting as beautiful as ever. Look at that nice sharp line right there. So this is going to be one of the braces for the upright. So now I just need to cut this last little bit here. That is it. I like to do a trial on this just to make sure it's right. Looks like I need to move it over some. Okay, the top bracket's in, and the bottom bracket is now cut and cleaned up, and it's in. And it goes underneath this. So we're able to, going to be able to weld here as well as under here. Now, what that's doing is when I come to weld out here, we just made a lever, uh, made some leverage here to push down on this, which could help to twist this. So I'm not against running a small piece of box tubing from one side to the other, right where this is, to keep it from pushing in. The other thing is, we put this on here to spread this load. This is not very strong, so it wouldn't be unreasonable to see this thing twist this. So everything I'm doing should be adding strength to this, not taking away. That's what we're after. And like currently, I have it spaced this way where I need it, and that is helping it to not move this way, but I don't have anything really structurally strong enough right now to make me happy to keep it from doing this and to keep it from doing this. Because right now, we're gonna weld to that light stuff. It's not gonna be very difficult for you go across the bump with a load and that jar, that's when you bend stuff. It's not going down the road nice and smooth. It's when you hit them big bumps. So we need something to be on the other plane you see how we're flat here and we're flat here so that makes both of them very susceptible to this so now what we need to do is get something in this plane coming off this way so we need something in between these two to tie them together besides this and tie it to our trailer frame so i'm thinking about running a two by four box tubing back here that'll allow us to weld all this together and get us into yet another plane that might be enough i've got the two by four box tubing it's a little bit heavier than this, which will be helpful, but it's still the same two inch diameter this way. It's just a little bit wider that way. So it's gonna stick over this way some. 
I'm okay with that. I don't think that's a big deal at all. And it'll allow us to get a lot of weld because we'll be able to weld up through here, be able to weld up through here. Now this is set back slightly. We'll have to fill that gap, but that's okay. I absolutely hate things that are out of plumb and out of square. That's why I typically end up tearing stuff apart so far. If you look here, you know, this, this C channel here is kind of bowed out a little bit, tips in here, and the center is actually bowed. And then this part right here, I had to kind of flap disc it a little bit because this angle iron is leaning out like this. <laughs> it just sucks. I mean, trying to build something square out of something round, you know, and a guy like me struggles because I, I want things to be right. And uh, <laughs> it's just awful. I just hate it. Oh, well, all I, all I can do is just, you know, do the best to make it as good as I can and move on. All right, so this side's all done. I did the horizontal weld at the top here. I did not do a cross here. I don't want to create that like a weak spot where it could crumple. I did the inside horizontal as well. I did do the vertical here and here. I'm hoping that we're adding strength by having that two, box, uh, two inch box tube there. All welded in down here. Everything's done inside and out. So now we are ready to go to the other side. We've already got this done, so. I've stuck a big pipe in there and I tried to move this thing back and forth. I couldn't get it to move. It doesn't mean it won't, it just means I couldn't get it. I got this side all mocked up, all my plates cut um, in here, same thing. I had to do this whole taper, jagged, uh, angled cuts and crap, but whatever, it, it, it's, it is what it is. So I don't know if I explained it before, but the reason I'm drilling more holes in my receiver tube is so that the a bar that we're putting up here can have not only more than one pin holding it, because this is just mild steel and that's a lot of load bouncing here. Um, so we're gonna have it sit on two different pins. So it'll help with the load, but it'll also help that from moving in and out quite as much. So now, I, now all this is fit, I need to take this back out and mark it. I'm doing these every two inches or every four inches apart, center to center. And then the box tube that goes in it will be every two inches. So we'll be able to adjust two inches by two inches everywhere. All right, so this one's all welded in. I think we're okay here. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add a piece of tubing from down low here to down low on the other side. And what that's gonna do is tie them together so the bottom can't move in and out, which will limit the amount of movement up here and then once we put our verticals up and our tie our crossbar we can put jam nuts to tighten everything up so i've got a piece of uh, tubing we're gonna have to clean it up um, my wife's gonna work on cleaning that up meanwhile i'm going to get started on the second spare tire mount that goes right here um, when they did this they're not even they're not even the same measurement back i moved that one slightly back but it was it was off. I just can't believe how how inconsistent everything is on this trailer. It's just so horrible. I got the old cross member cut out and got the new one cut and shape, uh, cleaned up, ready to weld in. Make sure we're square. I got it clamped, and I think we're I think we're good. That's about what I want. So I'll go ahead and weld this in real quick, 
and then uh, after that we will start the process of laying out where the hole goes and all that. Now that's all done. I use this deburr tool just to get all the sharp edges off of this. Works pretty good. Uh, now we have to make the spacers because I need this spaced off of here. Let me think here. Exactly one half of an inch. So I'm just taking some uh, some tubing and I'm cutting it to half inch, putting it on here, and just welding it as spacers. Then we'll mount the axle stub to it. So my spacers are cut and everything's bolted in, making sure it's right where I want it. I'm going to put the tire on, make sure that it actually clears and sits where I want, so make sure I didn't make any mistakes. If not, if everything's okay, I'm going to go ahead and weld these in. I'll just do kind of a half, half weld from here down to here on all of them. Uh, and that'll be more than adequate, I'm sure. I just welded halfway around it. Really a couple tacks is probably adequate because all it's doing is just holding them spacers, you know, and the bolts hold everything together. That's just to hold them so when you, for assembly, it's not flopping around. That's done. The next thing I gotta do is get the tube across the bottom here. We found a tube, my wife has it cleaned up, and it's, uh, well, as cleaned up as it can be. It's a rusty old piece of tubing, but it'll be fine. So we're gonna get that uh, mocked up. I'm gonna have to notch it and a couple spots where uh, braces go through, but that just gives us another opportunity to weld it. It'll be fine. So I got my lower crossbar going across from one side to the other, and this is just old uh, two and a half inch outside diameter tubing that I had. It's not gas pipe, it's actual tubing. So I just cut it at each place and full welded all the way around, and it's, it's nice and plumb, it's flat, it's everything I need it to be, and it's tied in at the bottom and that should really help from doing this you know quite a bit i mean ideally i'd love to have a a triangle brace in here but i can't do that i can't obstruct what's coming in here so that should be fine so now everything is needle scaled and blown off and we need to wash it down real quick and then we're going to go ahead and prime all the raw metal places that we have and of course the the rusty metal We'll get all that primed and we're going to give it its, hopefully, what's going to be its last coat of paint. This will be the third time this thing's been painted, so hopefully it's the last one. My wife's going to go over and wash everything really good so I can go ahead and get it painted. It shouldn't take too long, I hope. Well, we got it painted. We got two good coats of paint on, and this time I did the paint slightly different. I mixed it a little bit thinner than normal because it's not as warm as it today as it was today. I did the defenders, and I was hoping it was going to lay out nicely. And the other thing was, I actually read the directions on the uh, on the hardener and followed their recommendations. So there's a there's more hardener in this paint job than there was the other. So it should dry faster, and it should be more durable, and maybe even. That ain't bad. Hold a shine for a long time. I hope so. Um, I tried to get everything I could. We've only been done painting here now for about five minutes, so it's still leveling out, but it's looking pretty decent. I went ahead and did the the dovetail again because it, it had uh, a few spots that were, I wouldn't say thin, but uh, they were dull compared to the rest of it. So we went ahead and did that. We did all the inside. I didn't care about the cross members. That wasn't a big concern to me because they've got a good amount of paint on them. And I did the gate. This expanded metal is so hard to really get good coverage on. So I took advantage of that opportunity and gave it another coat, another two coats on that. And uh, yeah, not too bad, we're coming right along. I had one, one little problem. I thought I'd turn the compressor on and I didn't. So I was coming up this side and I basically ran out of air pressure. 
So I got down and turned the compressor on. I thought I left off right here. Well, I didn't. I was right there. And uh, I had done my first coat across the whole thing, but I had fanned up this way. And then I started back up here, and I fanned out that way. So I got a little bit of a light spot right there. I don't know if it's going to level out or not. Now it's starting to look like it's going to be okay. But I may have a light spot there. And I got one other spot that was troublesome like i was concerned i didn't want to have a bunch of runs in my fenders because i had all of this and there's a whole lot of stuff to cover and get and angles and whatever to get paint in here so i was being careful and i didn't hit this corner right in here real well so i may end up with what looks like a dry spot there but you know right next to it looks really good but right in here is a little dry so i hope that's going to level out like i said it's only been about five minutes ten minutes since I, uh, since I quit painting, since I was done, so we'll see. So now that that's all done, hopefully it's the last time I have to paint this. Every time I look down this thing and I see that that top rail, how it kicks out like that, it just drives me nuts. We tried to fix this when we tried to fix this, and we just couldn't get it in far enough. Just too much steel to cut, I guess. Had I known, hindsight's twenty twenty. I will probably never ever buy another trailer like this. I just build it because there's so many things I had to overcome to make it the way I want it. You know, whatever. Anyways, I'm the only guy in the world that can take two years to, you know, redo a utility trailer, that's for sure. But for all those people that have been following along, you know, there is a big playlist from the day I bought this thing till now. And you want to watch it all and see exactly where it was, where it came from, and what it's turning into, you can go through the playlist. And all those people that uh, watch, you guys leave comments, you leave thumbs up. We really, really appreciate that because that helps to make the channel and the videos get suggested. And, you know, that's what helps you grow. So we really appreciate that. So thank you to all those guys that watch, everybody who comments, and everybody that leaves us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. So next time, we'll start on wiring. It's going to be very in-depth, whole video, nothing but wiring um, from start to finish how i do it what i do it and why so i know there's been a couple guys looking forward to that very interested so we'll do our best thanks for watching guys we'll catch you on the next one so in the last video we finished up all the paintwork on this truck <laughs> this truck it's a trailer what a doofus <laughs>